Welcome to the Venari podcast. My name's Tom Woods, and today we'll be talking about all things digital transformation. Uh, and today I'll be speaking with the former digital transformation director for both Dyson and Specsavers, uh, Glenn. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Tom. Pleased to be here. Oh, fantastic. Um, and I wanted to start by asking you around strategy, specifically strategy, obviously, for digital and, and customer experience transformation. What do you see as the key strategies to, to implement and how do you believe they can be applied across the, the, the different organizations that, that you've worked with? So firstly, I'd always start by understanding your customer needs and expectations. Uh, it sounds very obvious, but it's a good starting point. Um, often you'd be looking at uh, improving customer experiences, digitizing processes, often looking for creating omnichannel experiences, personalization, leveraging data analytics. And in, in both of the organizations I've been, there's been a very big part of it, which has been simplifying and updating an aging technology stack. So they typically tend to be a mix of technology and customer very much front and center of mind. Uh, absolutely. And, and have you seen a particular difference in terms of, obviously you said those two organizations, there were some similarities there in terms of, of the tech stack. What were maybe the differences in terms of what you need to adapt to each organization specifically? Well, I think that there's certainly the, uh, that they have applied across industries. The core principles are the same. The strategies and technology may differ. Uh, we always started with a why, though, which I was uh, I'm a big fan of doing, which is why do you need to digitally transform and what's the problem statement and goals that you were trying to achieve? Uh, for Dyson, it was a, a very much a direct-to-consumer transformation, uh, moving from B2B to direct-to-consumer. And for Specsavers, it was very much about updating aging technology and moving to more, more of a, an ability to move towards uh, a direct experience rather than directly through stores only. Uh, but the, the, a lot of the principles were the same. They've often been around aging technology needing to be replaced, uh, delivering technology and, and functionality quicker, uh, and creating capability and new agile ways of working across teams. Right, absolutely. Um, and then in regards to, to, to building those out, obviously a lot of similarities, but how do you go about building those teams to, to tackle each program, each project um, is then in terms of fostering collaboration internally, managing upwards, um, and also obviously the move to a slightly more hybrid based approach, obviously across the last few years. Well, first thing in terms of um, the team themselves, uh, often when you embark on a digital transformation, you're either hiring new people or you're training uh, existing teams. So the approach I, I always have on hiring is, is look for a mix of skills whether that's design or engineering or delivery management or UX, you want a real mix of skills. And whenever I hire, I always hire for drive, intellect and attitude. And I always am a firm believer as, as most of the other things you can train. So looking for people that are necessarily experts in everything uh, isn't as important for me as people with the right attitude, the right intellect, the right drive. And when you're going on a digital transformation, you're, you're often a big people agenda to bring in new, new ways of working to train teams in more agile ways of working. So people with the right drive and intellect and attitude, I feel, is, is absolutely mandatory. Then, then in terms of uh, collaboration, you're always looking to create a culture that values communication and teamwork. Uh, tools, I think, are always really important to promote collaboration. So we've often used the likes of Teams and Slack and Jira and Confluence and Miro. All these tools are very much uh, set up uh, to enable teams to collaborate better together. I think it's really important to celebrate successes uh, and make sure that you, you take a step back from a busy agenda and really recognize where you've got success and to uh, and to fail fast and learn. You'll make mistakes along the way. Uh, often these transformation initiatives are hard. Uh, you will get things wrong and um, recognize it, put your hand up uh, and, and uh, but, but try to fail fast and learn. If things aren't working, don't make them a slow, painful death, make them a, a fail fast and, and, and recognize it and move on. So I always feel like that the face-to-face -face time is really, really important as well. In the hybrid environment that we're in today, having uh, end of sprint drinks, having face-to-face -face time and not doing everything via Teams, mm. what hybrid is clearly here to stay, but having that proper quality face-to-face -face time where you really get to meet your team, understand about them, learn a bit more about them, I think is really critical. Absolutely. It takes on more importance in, in the hybrid approach. Obviously, you get the positives of that, but you need to retain the positives of, of in-person interaction. And I think, interestingly there, how do you best, in, in your hiring practices, test for that drive and that intellect? What, what sort of questions are, are you asking or experiences are you interested in? 
Uh, I feel the drive one, you can get a fairly good sense of a person's ambition and how hungry they are for the role um, quite early on. And uh, uh, do I have specific questions I ask the same each time? No, probably not. But I think you get a sense for a person. You get a sense for how hungry they are to, to want to learn. You get a sense for them putting maybe over and above uh, normal levels of effort. Do they go and have a desire to want to learn? They go and sit next to people and talk to people and read books and listen to podcasts like this, maybe. Uh, so I've often seen people that just have a hungry desire to want to learn. It's those kind of people that are really appealing to me. And I've had multiple people throughout my career that have come from really junior roles. Um, in fact, I was with one over the weekend who went from a from being a BA uh, uh, for me many, many years ago and, it, and it went to a programme director and he's now running a, a, an SAP Centre of Excellence for a global multinational brand. It's just people that are have got the willingness to learn uh, and have this insatiable hunger for information and, and, and wanting to improve themselves. No, absolutely. It's a vital component of, of, of any career, absolutely. Um, and in terms of harmonising then, we, we touched on hybrid a, a little bit before. In terms of how you've worked across diverse markets, in particularly with, with Dyson, that was implementing direct-to-consumer across a number of, of different markets. How was that in terms of adapting to each different culture and each different challenge? Well, I think in terms of challenges, you're always going to have different um, fun functional or regulatory requirements. Um, I've, I've seen whether it's Dyson or Specs or anywhere in my career, there's always somebody that says we're different in our market or region. And, and um, having uh, ideally an ability to create a common core and doing localization where there's real value. Uh, I, I feel going into any digital transformation and replicating 100% of what you've got today on new technology is not a good approach. So always looking to standardize and simplify wherever possible. And within it, getting um, a really good um, digital governance framework and, and senior leadership engaged on, on the, the change you're going through. Uh, you've got to be able to recognize cultural nuances. You've got to recognize time zone variances and maybe varying te technology infrastructure that any digital technology is implementing into. Uh, so have a have a, a, a good governance framework do try and retain a common core and do with that governance framework and stakeholders look to standardize and simplify wherever possible spend time in market or in region really get to know the people in the market understand the cultural nuances uh, and i mentioned time zones uh, i've seen a number of times in my career a group let's say that might be running the, the program from the head office uh, asking a market to always be the one that's inconvenienced with the time zone early in the morning or late in the evening, uh, I think you have to share the pain. You have to be willing to do the six, seven o'clock call in the morning sometimes and the six, seven, eight o'clock call in the, in, in the evening sometimes. Uh, I, I've occasionally, even with uh, the two young children I had, I went, well, actually, I can do a call at nine o'clock at night because my kids are in bed and it's early in your morning. Um, that doesn't work for everybody. But at least um, recognising that you're not putting the person the other end of a call always inconvenienced I think is really important uh, and putting yourself in their shoes no absolutely it's about those shared experiences and fortunately now with more sort of hybrid and flexible working we we are a little bit more appreciative and, and allowing of that um, which is is always good and I think just sort of touching finally on looking towards the future of of digital transformation so is there anything coming up obviously a lot of people trying to leverage generative ai in particular but is there anything in terms of, of future strategies or future challenges that you're seeing in particular that you're keeping a, a, an eye on uh, so firstly we, we've talked about collaboration and hybrid a bit um so far i think um hybrid is clearly here to stay in terms of a digital transformation I'm sure we're going to get lots more functionality and lots more, more uh, new technology coming. So anything that continues to improve collaboration, this digital customer experiences and flexible working is only going to be a benefit. And I'm sure uh, all the tech companies out there are coming with new functionality for us on that one. Uh, it wouldn't be a, any podcast without talking about AI. So um, AI uh, and machine learning will clearly play a significant role. I think it will help personalizing customer experiences. It will be clearly automating routine tasks. Uh, and uh, I feel like with AI, every time I go to any event with AI, uh, 
you've got to start with what's the problem you're trying to fix. Uh, and I feel it's got so much potential uh, and we've got to turn that potential into something that really delivers business value quickly. But clearly AI has is, is got enormous untapped potential for us. I think um, omni-channel strategies will remain really important for consistent customer interactions. You've always got to have uh, cyber security and data privacy front and centre of mind, and there'll be critical focus areas uh, ongoing. So uh, I think all those are going to be areas where we um, we continue to have them at the front of our mind. And new technologies, I'd expect to move at the, the same kind of pace that they have done uh, We've all seen through the pandemic the amount of pace of new change in functionality and technologies in digital. It can only continue to improve and AI will possibly even speed it up further. So it's a really exciting time. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure the CISOs and DPOs in, in my network will be thrilled to get a mention within digital transformation. It's uh, so often their complaint on occasion. Um, but yeah, look, well, thank you so much for sitting down and, and sharing that with me. And uh, yeah, all the best. Thanks so much.